then here we get to meet Yun Chang and Yi Dei in Xuan uh, Dei's office. Uh, by the way, the the music playing in the last uh, scene was called Bogui's Tent, and you'll hear it several more times in the game. This theme is Xuan Dei's theme. It's refer it's uh, referred to as Xuan uh, Dei's office because that's where we first see it here in Xuan Dei's office. Uh, and here he is talking to his brothers, asking if, you know, now he's kind of been forced into taking part in this grand scheme of Bogui's. He's now asking his brothers if it's alright. Uh, and we start to get some character development. Uh, like I said, Chuan Day is the straight man in the story. He doesn't really want to participate, but he's forced to. Uh, Yun Chang's personality starts being shown that he's, uh, we wrote him as he's kind of, you know, penultimate warrior. He's just out to prove that he's a great warrior. So he says, you know, I'm in, you know, a chance to test my fighting abilities against the strongest opponents in the realm. Uh, Yi Dei, uh, these first few lines of his dialogue, uh, it, it's, it's actually my fault. They, they really don't line up with some of the stuff he says later because originally we were going to have him speak with like you know uh, a southern american dialect you know and gonna be uh, you know i'm now half food from the capital but we decided that no that just seemed silly and pedantic and we decided to go with just writing him in a normal uh accent but he's a drunkard Kind of like the Yi Day of the history and of the novel. <laughs> so all he cares about is food and wine, and you know, you'll you'll see that several other times. Uh, <clears throat> if you'll notice in the background on the wall, uh, we, we've thrown a few Easter eggs in there. If you're paying attention to know anything about the novel, uh, the rope up there is because of the story I, I said a little earlier about him tying the corrupt official to a pole, so we threw a rope in there. Uh, Juan Day was known for using a pair of, you know, twin swords, so that's why he has two swords hanging on the wall. Those are his swords from his fighting days. And then the rolls of fabric there are referencing his grass mat merchantile days. And here we have Bogui's theme again made by our composer Lucid Chord. Uh, I was really happy with how the music came out. Uh, we, we decided early on that we wouldn't be able to use uh, you know a lot of the free music out there because we wanted to go with a legitimate like Chinese feel. Uh, so I wound up actually going to Fiverr.com and looking for stuff. Found some artists. That's where I found both of the artists that work through this. Uh, the portraits, by the way, are made by uh, 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 Farid Fajaransa. Uh, it goes by the username Skeetover on Fiverr and Skeeto Art uh, ev everywhere else. <clears throat> uh, he did all of the character portraits and then. Uh, Rich Grayson, the, my other artist that we uh, recruited in, uh, he does all the battlers, which you'll see later on whenever we get to the fighting. Uh, <clears throat> One thing that we uh, did, uh, sorry, talking about the music, that's right. Uh, the music, like I said, we decided very early on that we really couldn't just use the stuff that was available. Uh, ultimately, this is an RPG Maker game, and RPG Maker is a, a fine program, uh, depending on what you're trying to do with it. But we decided early on, like I said, that the music in it just wouldn't work. Uh, there's a lot of free music out there that we could have used. We weren't really happy with any of it, uh, because none of it really had a good Chinese sense. And even if we could find one track, well, then we couldn't find anything else to match up with it. So like I said, I went to Fiverr and I found uh, this composer, Lucid Chord. Uh, because ultimately, you know, we're, we were trying to spend as little on this game as possible. 
Uh, we were trying to keep the budget under three to five hundred dollars, uh, which is somewhat difficult, uh, especially whenever you're getting art made and getting songs composed. Uh, for for anyone who wants to get into game development and they want to go get professional music, uh, the industry standard is about seven hundred and fifty dollars per minute. So that's over you know ten or eleven dollars per second of music to have it composed and played uh, and that's just like basic music that that's not necessarily you know if you're looking for an opening or an ending or someone's gonna be singing through it uh, that, that that's just to get it composed and recorded for you seven hundred and fifty dollars a minute with a budget of three to five hundred dollars that means we couldn't even get you know forty seconds of music so that's why we uh, trolled Fiverr a lot <coughs> Uh, but uh, I can talk about the music more later. Uh, here we're about to be introduced to uh, our next main character, Zalong. Uh, we decided to uh, uh, rule 63 and uh, make Zalong, or Chao Yun in the original story, uh, who was a man, decided to make Zalong a woman in this. And the reason for that is we're parodying the fact that uh, in Koei's Dynasty Warriors series, uh, Zhao Yun, Zilong, is always portrayed in a very bishy way, uh, always long, flowing hair, uh, except for the first game, actually, the first, the original Dynasty Warriors, uh, where he was at his manliest. But pretty much everything after that, he's usually got long, flowing hair, and very beautiful young face, <clears throat> uh, and here we have Jang face. And oh, hoy! she's bloody hot. Ah, uh, a little. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> ultimately, this game was originally going to be part of the 2014 uh, Degika Independent Game Maker contest. So uh, we decided to throw a little tongue in cheek, pardon the pun. Uh, adult humor into it, even though ultimately the game had to be, you know, basically PG or PG-13. So, here we have a cunnilingus joke that gets cut off to keep it from getting too dirty. Uh, and th this this particular line here refers to, uh, uh, kind of goes back to a folk story that you don't hear too often because... Zhuan Dei, Yun Chang, and Yi Dei are usually portrayed as the good guys in any RTK story. Uh, for those of you not paying attention, RTK is a shortened version of Romance of the Three Kingdoms. I'm going to use that acronym a lot, so you have to get used to it. <coughs> uh, but the folktale goes that Zhuan Dei only had an, you know, uh, his old mother to keep him behind and uh, whenever they swore an oath of brotherhood and went to fight in the, uh, said in the game it's called the Yellow Rebellion, uh, both Yi Dei and Yun Chang had wives and children, and they decided they couldn't just leave their wives and children behind, so what could they do? And, uh, Yi Dei laments that, you know, they can't just murder their families, you know, that would be wrong. Yi Dei says, I can't kill my wife and my children, and Yun Chang says, yeah, uh, I guess I'll kill your family and you can kill mine, and then we'll be good. Uh, but that that folk tale is usually forgotten because, like I said, they're they're supposed to be the good guys of the story generally, and uh, it, it's hard to get behind a guy that says, "Man, I need you to kill my wife so I can go out adventuring." Here, here's a knife. Uh, I, I got a couple of four-year-olds in the back too, if you wouldn't mind gutting them for me. <laughs> Join us again next time as we continue to discuss Dynasty Heroes. If you're interested in playing the game, as mentioned, Nick3 Entertainment is releasing this game for free at dickjutsu.com. Thanks for coming, and thanks for playing along.